I guess you didn't hear me. AAA uh, Detective Agency. That's right, Triple A. Puts me first in the telephone book. That is until somebody ups me in A. <laughs> uh, you selling something? No. No? Well, then in that case, come on in. Come on in. Uh, don't mind the way the place looks. Uh, my partner is out on a case, and uh, my secretary's on a coffee break since yesterday. Uh, well, what can I do for you, Mr. Fields? Jonathan Fields. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure you can help me. Well, neither am I. So we're starting off even. Uh, not even a chuckle, huh? Well, that's the way it goes. Well, sit down, talk, or go away. Take your pick, Mr. Fields. Yes, well, uh, this is a very delicate matter. Oh, I see. A delicate matter. It's uh, about a friend of mine, not me, a friend. And this friend of yours has a wife that you don't trust. No, I mean that he doesn't trust. And you want somebody to climb up on a fire escape somewhere and uh, take dirty pictures through a Venetian blind. Uh, strictly for this friend of yours, of course. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Fields, but I don't uh, do that kind of work. My camera's in the cleaners. There's a guy down the street who can help you out. Uh, he's a real artist. And he doesn't sleep in his office either. Class all the way. Just how, how do I go about getting your, your full attention? Do I throw something at you or what? Sorry. You look like you needed time to think, and besides, I was hungry. I have to hide this stuff from the landlord. You know that he thinks I live in here? Can you imagine that? All right, Mr. Field. What can I do for you? It's easy. You're Jonathan Fields. You just told me. <laughs> That'll be ten bucks, please. You're not very funny. Okay. Now, when did you start not knowing who you are? I don't know. Wow. Must be a crawly sensation. Hey, how about a cup of coffee, huh? You take cream and sugar? Um, I, I, don't, I don't even know if I like coffee, much less cream and sugar. Ah, that's all right. I only have black anyway. Well, why'd you ask me? I see you don't uh, believe me. I know, not a whole lot, Mr. Fields. But you're sweating. And that I believe. Empty your pockets out on the desk. It's a strange place to keep everything. Yes, well, uh, I was excited. About what? Uh, I've, al I've already been through that. That's how I know my name. Supposing this isn't your wallet. I see credit cards. Receipts. There isn't an address in there anywhere. I'm looking for a telephone number that goes with all those nickels and dimes. Wait a minute, maybe that's what it is. I didn't know what it was. 483 what? 1483. How come you didn't know that uh, that was a phone number? Three. What's the uh, phone number where you work? Expert. I almost remembered it. Expert? No, no, no. They haven't used uh, that exchange for three years now. Hello. 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 When you try to remember something, what happens? What runs through your mind? I search. I don't know how to say it. I, I just search, you know, like... Uh, like going through a file cabinet looking for a project number on the... Uh, 
nothing happens. I mean, I don't uh, find anything. Project number. You said project number. Now, most people, when they look through a filing cabinet, they look for A, B, C, and D, but you look for a project number. Now, what kind of a filing cabinet is that? Red. Red. Where do you work? Think tank. Think tank. What does that mean? I don't know. Well, are you laughing? What's so funny? <laughs> I don't know that either. All I know is that you're asking me a lot of, ex a lot of extremely silly questions. Now, that's the way I work. I mean, uh, you're going to take my case? Uh, you certainly are a case, Mr. Fields. Anyhow, I got hooked on you back there when you were talking about getting excited. You want to tell me about that now? No, huh? Okay, whenever you're ready. First, we'll find out where you live. Your bank will know. Banks are very good at keeping track. Hello, Citibank. Uh, my name is Jonathan Fields. Uh, account number 0174. Uh, one of my statements is missing. Would you mind seeing what address you have on me? By the way, I get 10 bucks an hour, eight hours minimum. All right. Hello. Yes, that's right. Thank you. You live at uh, 14360 Mariposa Drive. Apartment 7D. I remember. I remember. The second you told me, I mean, I, I, I can tell you exactly what it looks like. The furniture, my desk. The bedroom, the drapes. A girl named Helen picked out the drapes. Nothing like a good set of drapes picked out by a girl named Helen, I always say. <laughs> Let's go have a look. I like the drapes that Helen picked. And the desk. Is that a sign of life? It was my father's. Well, what's happening? Everything clicking into place? <laughs> Grinding is the word. I remember things after the fact, not before. At least I know now what I do. What? I can't tell you. Huh? Red file cabinets. Top secret projects. Well, it figures you weren't a bookie. Think tank, think tank. You know, I had a frosty idea about that. It reminds me of Thought Corporation, where a lot of very bright people figure out who gets killed and how soon, when that big red button gets pushed up yonder. No wonder you sweat. Is that what you're trying so hard to forget? I'm not paying you to ride me. Now, if what I do bothers you, if where I live and how I live makes a difference, you uh, don't... Wait a minute. Oh, oh, I was just looking for signs of life. I think I better pay you what I owe you. What for? I haven't earned it yet. Well, I'm not paying you enough to justify fooling around with <clears throat> the uh, kind of trouble I'm in. You need help, Mr. Fields? Yes. Then try me. I think I'm involved in a murder. Bailout time. No, I don't go around the police. Well, uh, neither do I, apparently. I, uh, I was trying to call them when I found out that I didn't even remember my own name, and that's, that's when I got excited. You see, uh, I woke up in a strange apartment, and I don't even know how I got there or when, or who it was. The, the body, I mean. A girl, a woman. She'd been... She'd been... Killed. Did you do it? Well, that, of course, is something to conjure with. I don't know. I... Uh, I don't remember. that way out when you're ready. I'll tell you when I'm ready. You remember where it was you woke up? Vividly. The house detective showed me how to do this in a hotel one time when I was selling refrigerators. He says you take an ordinary credit card just like this and you slip it between the latch and the door. And then you... you jiggle it. 
A few times. And you keep jiggling it. Nothing happens. It's stuck. This mirror was broken. Yeah, so you told me. And it was all very dramatic. Bloodstains on the rug. Tracks where the body was dragged. Corpse in the bathtub. <sighs> Nothing like that. Maybe it's the uh, wrong apartment. No. No, the furniture's the same. Yeah, sure. Is that the uh, bedroom through there? Hmm. Describe it for me. Walls, furniture, whatever you can remember. It's uh, very feminine. Um, blue walls. Yes, like the sky. And there's a blood stain on the wall on this side. And uh, a king-size bed with a pink bedspread. Pink, lots of pink. Just uh, turn it around and pull up here. I'm sorry, I can't take you inside without a clearance. Everything coming back? You know where you are, where you're going? Well, it's the same as before. I remember things when I see them, like this building. Uh, and I know where my office is, and uh, I guess I'll remember the rest of it. Except the really important question, like why I keep imagining things like murder. You're sure now? You imagine all that? Well, what else? Uh, I'll have a lot to talk about with the project medical officer. If I can remember who he is, of course. Well, that's something else. You're a good man with a wild goose. It isn't over yet. I'll be around. Take it easy, huh? Don't do anything sudden. Know what I mean? Stay smooth. God, old baby. We've been keeping your phone hot all morning. We had that Alice in Wonderland in the tank at 3 o'clock. Where were you? Oh, yes. Uh, I'd forgot. You forgot? How did you manage to do that? You coming? feel like saying good guess. I warn you, our group chairman is being very mysterious today. Him is in a mood, him is. Won't even tell me where he's been all morning with all us eager beaver assistants trying to track him down. I guess a large hangover. What do you guess? Sure, it's none of my business. Gentlemen, are we running off at 3 o'clock Alice in Wonderland? Or are we not? Alice in Wonderland? You never did like that code name, did you? 
Here we are, Alice in Wonderland. Personality evaluation, first and second strike, nuclear attack. With optional attitudes measured against computer A347, programmed total conflict. Alice in Wonderland. Five army men against five navy. We agreed they wouldn't know each other's branch of service. They don't. Only we know that. Yes, but... Yes, of course, sir. Sorry. Well, if we're going to play the game of blowing up the world at 3 o'clock today, I suppose someone had better start setting up the data tapes. Anyway, I'm sure you two have a lot to quarrel about, so I'll let you get down to the nitty-gritty of life. Uh, have I ever uh, told you, Lou, that you belong on Madison Avenue? Many times, Chief. Many, many times. And frankly, I'm a little sick of hearing it. Well, it's no secret that our man Haley has ambitions that involve kicking you in the head for starters. You act as though you don't care. Maybe I don't. You apparently don't care much about anything. And uh, what's that supposed to mean? Where were you last night? Why? Well, you could at least lie about it. Tell me something, anything. Your aunt died? Phone call from Washington? Emergency? Something glib and sincere. I wouldn't believe you. But I could pretend I did. I waited until two o'clock. I uh, gather that we had some kind of arrangement about last evening. Yes, Mr. Field? Uh, come in, would you? Ida. You just told me to come in. Yes, Ida, of course. I was thinking, uh, oh, who's uh, on duty uh, assigned to our group of staff psychiatrists? Dr. Joshua? Yes. Would you get him for me, please? I want to discuss this uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland project with him. He never comes in before 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had some additional thoughts, but if he isn't in... I tell you what you might do. Um, would you see if you can find that overall project file for me, please? Good 
Check the index response meter. Computer on hold, ready to start. What? Computer room is ready. Yes. Uh, well, I'll tell you. I've uh, decided to let you conduct the exercise today. In the briefing, you said... You feel capable of taking my place? As a matter of fact, I do. I assumed you would. Now just uh, keep on with your routine. I'll act as observer. All right, bring on the gladiators. Light up the tank. On the mark. 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 No, they're mine. See, I recognize them. The crack in the rim. Been meaning to get them fixed. I've got your glasses. You left them here yesterday. You must have picked up Liz by mistake. You sure those are your glasses? Cross my heart. Yes, number five. Holding. I question our report. Opponent unlikely to launch preempt strike so close to possible Oracle surveillance. All right, number five. Objection noted. Continue. Wise guy. One in every group. Feed him random. See if he survives. Uh, I want a howl. Back there at the department store. Uh, you trying to say something to me, man? Don't get wise with me. I'll push that radio right through your head. I just bought me, baby. Very funny. Well, I told told Lorraine, I said to Lorraine, I said, hey, man, I mean, this whole, this whole following thing is just for laughs, and I guess I just blew it. There ain't no chance to go in the room to your crib to see who you are, huh? No, huh? Well, listen. There's a great two, two door short uh, right down the street. And why don't you uh, make it on over there? Translate. Get in the car. You didn't say please. Come on, get in the car. No. You please get in the car? I don't want to get in the car. And you're not big enough to make me. He is. Look at him. He's not out. Not out. Not out. Not out. Well, he should be. 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 Look at him. Did he give him enough? Did you want to do anything? Funny. You funny. I get. I get on the drums, three caps, and there's a freaking elephant. One, two, three. You held out, didn't you? You knew we were setting him up for an accident. You took care of yourself, didn't you? Nah. You're freaking out right now, aren't you?
Hey, quit it. Uh, hey, quit it, will you? Oh, it's you. You, you're real, 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 real. Well, of course I'm real. real. What's the matter with you? Uh, Are you all right? What? Oh, 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 boy. I, I feel stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. You're, you're Jonathan. Yeah. Jonathan Fields. That's her, yes. Jonathan Fields. <laughs> here. What, what, what are you doing here? Well, I was waiting for you. I had something to tell you. You have something to tell me? Yes. Oh. Hey, what, what time? What, what time is it? It must be night. It must be night. Night, 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 night. Wow! I'm sorry, I'm not feeling very bright. Uh, do me a favor, will you? Uh, the phone. Six five four one six five four. Sarah. Ask for Sarah. Six five four one six five four. Have you been to your apartment? I came uh, straight here. Something happened. I'm sure now about there being a murder. You won't believe me. Oh, I believe you. Believe me. I believe you. <laughs> yes, um, uh, Sarah, would you hang on just, just a minute, please? Uh, Sarah. 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 Hello, my girl. It's me, Art. I know what time it is. Oh, no, no. You don't have to turn on the lights to talk on the phone. She says she can't hear me in the dark. All right. All right, go ahead. Hey, you have a gun. Don't you have a gun? No. They scare me. Only what's happening scares me even more. Now, hello. Oh, is that better now? Oh, you, you, you recognize my voice with the lights on. Huh? Listen, you've got to do me a favor. I want a gallon of coffee and a, a place to stay for me and a friend. All right, honey, honey, honey. Listen, you, you, you tell him how to get there because I think I'm going to pass out. He did. Let's go, Dad. Wow. Sarah, my feet are getting flat. <laughs> they always were. Would you, uh... Gladly. You feeling faintly human? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Hey, you know, you quit turning into a polka-dotted nudist. I was a polka-dotted nudist. Yeah. You know, you look beautiful polka-dotted. I'm sorry we watched it on you like oh, that. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Everybody should have somebody to wake up in the middle of the night. I'm his. Unfortunately, all I get in return is him. Uh -huh. Two whole weeks, Art. You're going to have to renew your option. I'm getting tired of watching TV and waiting for the phone to ring. Well, I'm a bad boy, Sarah. I'm rotten to the core. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I'm going to say good night. Mr. Field, you make yourself comfortable, and uh, you ring for breakfast, someone's bound to answer. Art, you take the room across from mine. Mr. Fields can have the one next to it. Oh, well, yeah, well, that's just fine, but how do I find the right one? Isn't he sweet and old-fashioned? Oh, Sarah, Sarah. I am going back to bed. In the meantime, you can tell Mr. Fields how many times I asked you to marry me. That is, if you can remember. Oh, well, it's... Uh, Mr. Fields. Uh, I gather I'm not supposed to know exactly what kind of trouble you're in. That's okay. But I don't want anything happening to him. Not unless I do it personally. Which could be the case if you don't phone more often. 
Uh. Round and round and round we go. Well, go ahead, say it. It's written all over your forehead like a neon sign. She is a whole lot too good for you. She'd kill herself if she fell off her money, you know. She's rich, yeah. and I'm not. Now, tell the truth. Can you see her donning my socks? As a matter of fact, I can. You can? Yeah. Oh, well, I can't. I can't see myself asking her. That's, you know, that's what she says. But I just can't see myself asking her. So I'm rigid. All right, let's go. Right. No, 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 no. No, enough now. No, no. Let's straighten you out first before uh, we start on me, huh? Oh. Uh, this guy, Haley, did he get wise to uh, how much it meant to you that they were his glasses? I don't think so, but I can't be certain. I didn't stay around to see, you know. It shook me hard. Yeah, I guess it did. And you thought it was amnesia, huh? Hallucination until suddenly it all became real. Haley must have been at the apartment. Or maybe he murdered her. Or maybe you did. I don't know. Pick one. Haley. Sugar in the icebox. Funny. What'd you say? Sugar in the icebox. I, uh... I remembered something about the apartment. I was looking for some cream in the refrigerator, and uh, there was sugar there, too. Funny place for it, but it's handy for the coffee, I guess. Do you always use three lumps of sugar in your coffee? I uh, keep trying to cut down. Uh, you're lucky you woke up, much less remember anything. Now, I was given two caps, apparently, and I was ready to bug out. Uh, what do you mean? Lysergic acid, LSD, better known as trip tickets. Acid heads. They dissolve a dose, soak it up in a blotter. They chew on the blotter whenever they want to turn on. Or they pour it onto a cube of sugar and hide it in the refrigerator. Now, you had three doses of LSD in one cup of coffee. That's enough to keep an acid head traveling around in Never Never Land for a week. I may switch to tea. Uh, just plain tea. Are you sure you weren't here after work? Well, the last time I was here was with you, yesterday. Well, somebody was. Last night. I've got a funny feeling that I don't like. Where's the bedroom? Your friend Haley, he remember where he left his glasses. And they had to do something about... It was done very neatly. You've been elected Pigeon of the Year. Mm. I won't blame you if you pull out now. Are you kidding? You think I want out? I do. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's plenty of time to call the police. It won't hit the floor any hard if we wait a few hours. Haley might report it. No, he wouldn't do that. How could he explain knowing about it? He'd have to wait for you or somebody else. When does your cleaning woman come in? Uh, Mondays and uh, uh, Thursdays. Oh, good, that gives us two days. And at 10 bucks an hour, I can pay my rent. <laughs> I wish you came up with better jokes. Well, that's the way your shamus is tough. Tough like. I saw it in a couple of bogey movies. Hello, Sarah. You have to do me a favor. Uh, telephone number. 483-1483. Girl named Arlene. That's all I know. Well, somewhere in that big, beautiful corporation of yours is a slimy little man who finds things out about people that nobody should know. I want the whole enchilada on this Arlene. Okay, see you later.
What time do you usually go to the office? You, you expect me to go in and face Haley as though nothing's happened? Either we keep him guessing or he keeps us guessing. You know, he's way ahead of us right now. By the way, what does he do? What do you do? Well, we uh, <clears throat> evaluate uh, personnel. Men in highly sensitive uh, military areas. You look for their weak spots and then put the screws to them. Pavlov's dog stuff. The games. Games, we call them. What would you do if... Uh, there are areas where it's vital to uh, know a man's pressure limit. The computers give us an accurate graph on the individual and his uh, response potential. Hooray for machines. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. That kind of thing wouldn't fit Haley's graph any more than it would yours. I mean, you... You don't like guns or the idea of... <coughs> of uh, Killing. <coughs> K... <coughs> KQ is uh, what we call it. KQ, KQ. Kill quotient. Yes, we'd look into that deeply. You see, there are many situations where a man oriented to... <coughs> oriented to that um, would be extremely dangerous. Now, Haley has no perceptible KQ, or he wouldn't be allowed in my department. No. He'd be more likely to hire somebody to do it for him. And I think I know who. Strontium study panel will make three. Tech Ops Chairman Fields reported in building. Professor Riedel, please call your office. Yesterday, without knowing it, you gave me rather a severe wound. It's casual, but deep. Why? I had no intention. No platitudes, Jonathan. I think I deserve an honest answer. I uh, remember that much. Now, yesterday, I couldn't even remember your name. That doesn't surprise me. Oh, I stewed about it. Spent about 20 luxurious minutes feeling very sorry for myself. And then I realized something was wrong. What is it, Jonathan? Now oh, I am hurt. Really, I, I'm beginning to feel like just a, a phone number. Oh, please. No, I, I, I remember that uh, we decided to keep our relationship on a therapeutic... Uh, now, just a moment. That, that word was yours, I remember. We decided to have a therapeutic, semi-detached, neo-modern, moderately distant relationship involving nothing more than an occasional slight expenditure of energy, unquote. I wanted it on your terms. I was an idiot. My next excursion into the field of romance is going to be with an ape man. Somebody who can grunt and say, me want you, and I'll reply me like. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't... But we seem to grope toward each other like, like two extremely efficient adding machines. Helen! I need help. Uh... I tell you, it's, it's as though I, I, I'm strapped to the inside of a thick plate glass window. I can't move. And the only communication I have with the outside world is, is tapping on the glass from time to time. Are you gearing for a nervous breakdown or something? Well, I'd said I, it's, yes, I'd settle for that. But uh, right now, I need places safe for the next few days. How about a good hotel? Inside, you know, where it um, means something. I am uh, screaming for sympathy. Don't look at me. I just turned into a snow maiden. Helen. All right. Oh, bloody, bloody right. But maybe one of these days you'll be able to tell me what happened to I love you. In this computer world we're making here!
calls again in Major Jensen. Uh, tell Dr. Arkwright's office I'll be up in a few minutes and uh, have Major Jensen kill him. speak to you about Dr. Fields. Mr. Haley asked for clearance on him and I gave it, subject to your approval, of course. You should be waiting in the lounge, not running around loose. What's his classification? Mathematician. What was Fermat's last theorem? Mathematician. Who was Pythagoras? Ptolemy. Euclid. How much is two and two? Police. No. See that he gets out of the building, that's all. I'll have to speak to Mr. Haley about this. I'll do that. You... Just get him out of here. I don't know how I got in. Someone gave him a key. Have a lock changed. Hello, Haley. This is, uh, Jonathan Fields. I've been interviewing your mathematician. He was supposed to be a surprise. And the purpose? It was supposed to look like suicide. That would lead to a search of your apartment. And he would find a reason for suicide, wouldn't it? This insanity's not a game. No, then why are you playing? Why don't you end it? Call the police, see what happens. Maybe you could talk your way out of it. Call them, Jonathan. Well, why don't you? That way I'd have to come out in the open. That's for you to do. I'll stay hidden, thank you. Yes? Mr. Fields, it's Dr. Arkroyd's office. I'm on my way. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes, but we've completed phase one of the comparative studies, active versus passive defense, and they indicate the obvious. Real deterrence exists solely in the mind of a potential enemy and only if we assume rationality. Yeah? All right. You'll have it at the end of the week. Yes, I'll present it personally. All right. No calls for a few minutes. Well, Jonathan? You wanted to see me? Yes. I thought you should have the opportunity of explaining your remarkable behavior at the RUR exercise yesterday. Extraordinary, you mean because I left? Fortunately, Lou Haley was equal to the occasion. I'm beginning to think that we're very fortunate to have Mr. Haley as your co-chairman. I'm not so sure. I've been thinking of asking you to take him off the project. No. Then... Perhaps you'll take me off the project. I, I could use a leap of absence. No. I won't do that either. But what I will do if there is any further disturbance of the project is make Mr. Haley senior chairman. Is that all? <clears throat> Why? Why, when I came into the room and heard your voice, did I suddenly think of a, a young woman named Arlene? Is that a question? No, it's just a thought. He was only guessing. All right, a brilliant guess, but still a guess. He's handling this thing very badly, almost as though he doesn't know certain things. He did see you in her apartment. I know, you told me that, only you didn't tell me soon enough. Maybe he didn't recognize you, but he certainly knows now that I was there. I hope you're grateful for what I'm doing. You called me! 
Remember? I want you to remember that most kindly, sir. I was not even involved in this until then, and now I am. And I expect certain favors in return, sir. Just remember that I am doing all I can to help you, sir. That's all you have to know. Cling to it, sir. Cling to it. That's where salvation is at for you. Nice speaking with you. Nothing like a good talk to clear the air, sir. Arlene Michaels. Does that name ring any bells? Used to work for Thought Corp. Secretary. Ding dong? <laughs> for a Dr. Edward Arkroyd. Ding dong. Exactly. He must have thought very highly of her typing. Enough to pay the rent, the phone bills, etc. A lot of silk in their relationship. But he's married. He has three children. Oh, well, then it couldn't be true. I mean, a family man like him couldn't be horsing around. Hmm? Uh, all right, but where would Haley fit in, then? A friend of the family's, maybe. Dig in your head. Dig hard. Is this private? Uh, no, I'm, I'm trying to remember, uh, uh, things I can't remember. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. I'm sorry. Nothing. Global amnesia, it's called. What it adds up to is, you can't remember because you don't want to remember. In order to forget one thing, you've forgotten everything. I'd better have a look at your diploma in psychiatry. Ah, itchy scratchy, huh? I must be getting close to the bone. Just getting on my nerves with your homespun thought processes. Oh, really? Well, you know, when you're away from button pushing, I wouldn't call you a great ad for thinking either. Whether you know it or not, Guy, you're hiding out from something. I know all about you, and yet I don't know a thing. You're some kind of uh, homemade do-it-yourself robot. I wouldn't say that. Look at him, he doesn't even get mad. I'd have punched myself in the mouth by now. Where are you? How did you get in this time capsule? <clears throat> well, you're not exactly in the mainstream of life yourself, you know. I mean, uh... Man with your uh, brains, your supposed vitality, sitting in a crummy office playing cops and robbers, applauding yourself for turning down clients who want a divorce because that's integrity. Well, if I'm hiding out, I'll move over for you. That's a long way below the belt for a robot. Robot? Take my robot's hand. Oh, you take off an acre of skin when you get started, don't you? Well, if that's the way you want to play, let me tell you uh, something. Uh, 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 Mama, don't allow no furniture throwing in here. They're antiques. Jonathan, you mustn't tell my guy the truth. It hurts his feelings. I'm sorry. Forget it. I was off base, but not way off. All right, I know you want to help me, but I cannot buy the idea that I'm trying to forget. What would I want to forget? I mean, who actually... Who actually hurt her? She wasn't hurt! There's another word for what happened to her. We're wasting a whole lot of time on semantics, aren't we? No, not really. You know, there's another word that you, that you don't want to use. Killed. You keep tripping over it. Arlene Michaels was killed. Now put that in your tape recorder. This is childish. All right, then it should be easy for you to say that Arlene Michaels was killed. Arlene by Michaels what? <laughs> she what? All right, all right. I know you can't. And I think that we should find out why. Who game to go back the same way you came out tonight?
order. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out when he brings it. <laughs> but when are you going to join the party? I'm uh, wondering what we're doing here. Uh, that makes two of us. Well, now, how do you like that? Uh, look around you. Look at these kids. Do you know that in 20 years they're going to be running the country? about Arlene. Concentrate on that night, Wednesday night, Arlene. 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 Ah. Uh, oh, she. She called me. Uh, telephone. Did I? Uh, did I remember her? She said, uh, <laughs> if I was a friend of Dr. Arkwright, I'd better do something. Scandal, she said. Talk to him. And so I wrote his number. No, 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 no. No, I wrote his number down. And I tried to reach Arkwright out of the office. Uh, called her. Oh, she was hysterical. <laughs> Where's the nurse? Where's the... You went to see her. You went to see Arlene. You went to her apartment. Apartment? Oh. How do you... Apartment, apartment. Three B. Four. Blood. How do you like that, huh? Blood, blood. Huh? Three, B, 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 B for blood. 
That was after. Uh, then... Uh... Oh, she came to the door, 3B, said... And it became her. Uh, Arlene, I... I met her once or twice at the office, Arlene. And, uh... something because he was leaving her, another woman, you know, tired of leaving her. Boy, did she seem strange, you know? Like, uh, she was very, very hazy, you know, not, not real. Well, that's because she was emotional, you know? Emotional, I thought. No, no, there's something else you see, was drugs. Drugs, maybe. But she was very angry. You know, I saw his picture. I saw his picture. I looked at it, and she became hysterical. Ryan, you? Blood. Blood. Oh, excuse me. I, I better go to the kitchen and wash off the blood. It's a dream. I kept saying to myself, a dream. I mean, I met her, I knew her. But she, she, she just didn't seem real, you know? And this business with Arkwright, what does that have to do with me? I, mean, I didn't want to be touched with it. I didn't want to be touched with it in any way. Huh? No. But I... I was touched. I was touched by it. Emotional, I thought. Emotional. 
Well, there's something else you see, Lewis. Drugs. And yeah, drugs, maybe. Touched with it in any way, huh? But I, I was touched. I was touched by it. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, population response. Grid bombing. Uh, 30 days, 90% kill, 45 days. Total kill. Bonus effect, 10 days target schedule. 280 million kills. Uh, 50 days total kill. Genetic echo effect. Not noted. You see, because there are bald heads Mitch, skin cancer, <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> oh, God. God, you Push that button until that kill. Why should one make me cry? Ridiculous. One. Only one. system of computers. They're fed gut facts about the individual involving 40 or 50 psychiatric tests. And if it were possible to boil a human being down to absolute essentials, this is our Mr. Haley. Now, this preliminary information is general. His qualifications, uh, his intelligence, he has very high ratings, by the way. Aggressive control. Oh, that's very, very poor. I remember I almost didn't hire him because of that factor. Intuitive fear syndrome. Now, that means uh, he's very wary. Cautious, fearful. The type that sees ghosts? Hmm. Overreacts to random causation. Sex orientation unweighted. That means, uh, just doesn't mean much to him. Action potential undefined. Yes, he has a red line. 
That's right, I remember now. He has a VP tape. Yes. Yes, what's, what, what's that number, that, that number at the bottom, the VP number? A3414. What does it mean, action potential not defined? It means look out. If this man wants something, he'll do almost anything to get it. And this will tell us what it is. Haley himself, on the subject of Haley, without his knowing it. Well, I don't know. I think it's one thing to be brilliant, as this subject apparently is, but look at the minor scale. Loaded. That AG con rating is one of the worst we've ever looked at. This man, whoever he is, will do anything to make himself important. All he thinks of is power, power, power. This man would kill to achieve power. Now we know. He saw a chance to get awkward by the throat. Instant success. Now that girl was alive when Haley got to the apartment. You saw her move. And Haley did what he said he would do to achieve power. He drowned her in the tub. Now we call the police. The police? Wait a minute, are you kidding? Oh, what does it take to get you mad? Oh, this guy's been using you as tissue to blow his nose. For three days, he's been playing games with you. The hawk and the dove. The computer war. Only he's pushing all the buttons. Well, I'm gonna break his miserable back. And on his own terms, too, with this. We'll see what he does when the heat's on. I'm gonna line him up for a very bad day in the think tank. You want me to play the game his way? Hmm? I'll do it. I'm not afraid of getting my hands dirty. You can always pretend you never met me. All right, all right, forget, forget what I said. I mean, where do I get off zinging somebody because he wants to be one of the good guys? But remember this. If we drop this thing now, you'll be in the clear, all right. But Arkroyd won't. He'll probably wind up in a sack, still thinking that he killed the girl himself. What do you want done? I want to break Haley. I want to make him climb up the wall. Hit him where he hurts until he cracks. The same way you use to put the screws to people in these lousy games you've been playing. Mr. Haley didn't say nothing to me about redecorating. Well, actually, he hasn't really made up his mind. He just wants an estimate. Will you hold that for me, please? I got other things to do than hang around watching you measure floors. I ought to call the superintendent. Oh, that'll be a wonderful idea. And maybe he'll let you help me. I could use you, you know, to roll back the carpet while I take measurements, move some furniture around. Oh, my, piano. I certainly need help moving that. Oh, no, I'm busy, real busy. I don't get no extra for moving furniture. I'd appreciate it. I got my own work to do. Just check with me on your way out. This is Mr. Haley. Huh? Mr. Haley in 8C. The faucet came off in the bathroom. The faucet, it came off. What do you mean? What do I mean? The water faucet came off. The water's running all over everything. There's a dead rat in my bureau. Says there's a dead rat in this bureau. <laughs> I'll send someone up right away, Mr. Haley. Right away. You sure this is just some kind of practical joke now? Oh, yeah, yeah. I told you, he's getting married. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I know how it is when folks get married. <laughs> you know, some friends of 14A when he got married, they short-circuited his electric blanket. <laughs> well, he was away on his honeymoon. <clears throat> See, no, you're not going to do anything like that. Oh, no, no. Not anything like that. Uh, here. How's that, all right? Hello, Jonathan. Listen, everything is ready. Now give me five minutes before you make the call. Right. Well, here we are, Mr. Hanley. Service with a smile. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, what seems to be the trouble? No matter what it is, I'll fix it in a jiffy. You know, the super downstairs, he told me you were having hysterics. So he sent me up right away. Some nonsense about a water faucet, you know? Upstairs, the bathroom. Oh, the bathroom, the bathroom. Yeah, sure. Hey, you know, he said something to me uh, uh, about a dead rat. Yeah, he's a great kid, that guy. You know that super? He said you had a dead rat up here. So I said, why would anybody want with a dead rat? <laughs> there is one in my shirt drawer. I left it open. You take it out. A dead rat? 
Oh, I get it. A big night out, huh, sweetheart, baby? My name is Haley. Yeah, sure, Mr. Hartley. Haley, H-A-L-E-Y. Yeah, sure. Now, let me get this straight, Mr. Herman. Uh, a broken water faucet and a dead rat in a shirt drawer. Oh, you know something? I got a hand in it. You're gonna be pretty brave. I couldn't wear a shirt that had a dead this rat on it. This is a dirty shirt. I got it out of a clothes hamper. Now, would you mind, now, please, look, look, please? It ain't that I don't enjoy talking to you, Mr. Herman, but I got a lot of work to do. You know what I mean? Oh, by the way. Yes? Your phone's ringing. <laughs> Yes, what is it? Who? Who is this? I can't hear you. Barney. Hang on. Will you close the door, please? What? What did you say? I can't hear you. Close the door, please. Listen, you have no right calling me like this. Suppose your phone is tapped. Well, how would you know whether it is or not? You're so juiced up all the time. You've got all the money you're gonna get from me. If you think... Well, I found it. I'm on the phone. I just wanted to tell you that, that this is broke. I'm gonna have to charge you for it. Fourteen bucks. What's it got to do with me? Let the building manager pay for it. Well, are you kidding? You broke it. Well, come on. What do you say? You want me to put a new one on or you want me to leave this off? It don't make no difference to me. You still gotta pay me for the call either way. Fix it. Fix it. Go ahead. Fix it. All right. Don't get so twitchy. Don't get twitchy. I mean, where would everybody be if they flew off the handle with every little problem? Now, you listen to me. And you get this straight once and for all. If you call me again, or try to bother me, or try any blackmail schemes on me, I have ways of taking care of you. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I found it! I found it! Look at that mother! Look at that mother! <laughs> wow, what a mother! Woo. What do you want me to do with it, Mr. Hammond? Get out of here! What? Well, I could wrap it up for you in case you want to keep it, you know? In case you want to break your lease or something. I mean, after all, what right they got having rats run around loose in people's apartments, you know what I mean? You ought to keep it. I'll tell you what. I'll put it in the refrigerator, keep it nice and fresh, huh? Get it out of here, take it out. Okay, okay. Okay! Don't get all charged up. <laughs> I mean, after all, it ain't like having a dead body lying around, you know what I mean? What do you mean by that? What do you mean? morning and there it was. Prominent scientist is found dead. Dr. Edward Arkroyd, well-known research analyst and head of Thought Corporation, was found dead today. They found an empty prescription bottle by his bed. Friends and relatives told police late last evening that Dr. Arkroyd had been despondent for several weeks but could give no other reason for the apparent suicide. No. This changes things. We better get to the office fast. Yeah, what do you want? Right, toy department, huh? Arnie, yeah, who is it? Oh. Hmm, none of my business. Arnie? Hey, it's for you. Yeah, who is it? I don't know. It's none of my business. Like I care. Arnie, this is Lou Haley. Did you call me a few moments ago? Yes, I remember telling you not to. It wasn't you then. No. 
Someone is playing games. No, 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 no. I can take care of it. The important thing is they know who you are now. That worries me. You'll have to get out of town. I don't care what you think. You're going to do what I tell you. You want the police on your neck, Arnie? It can be arranged. Believe me, baby. Look, Mr. Haley. Now, look. You just listen to me. I don't like you running off of me like this. You know, I can threaten, too. And you're making me nervous talking like this. Hello? Mr. Haley? Police Department, Westwood Precinct, Sergeant Mavitt. Hello. I want to report a murder, please. Name and phone number, please. Oh, well, Haley. Lou Haley. H-A-L-E-Y. Uh, my phone number is 581-1299. Hang on. Homicide, Lieutenant Barney. Hello, I want to report a murder, please. Oh, no! No! <laughs> No, please, no! No! Uh, my uh, doctor says I'm getting better. Quack. I don't know why you're so concerned about Haley. Usually it adjusts very well to a disaster, especially if it's somebody else's. There's some people in Dr. Arkwright's office and they're asking for you. I think it's the police. Mr. Haley wanted for important message. Please check backtrack message board. Population response graphing group now assembling proof room B. What are you doing? If I start yelling... No, you don't want to do that. No, you don't want to make me nervous. I get real funny when I get nervous. Now, what's down below? The cellar, the basement, Arnie. I don't know. I... If you want to talk, well, why don't we go upstairs to my office and sit down comfortably? No, no thanks. I'm more comfortable in cellars. I do some of my best work in cellars. Mr. Haley. Where's Jonathan? Mr. Haley. Will you leave me alone? Well, the man that's waiting, he won't wait. He's Lieutenant a... Barney, City Police, it's about your uh, call, Mr. Haley, reporting a murder. 
Let me see your credentials. What phone call are you talking about? You called the station, said you wanted to report a murder and then hung up or disconnected or something. I had a hard time tracking it down. I think I understand. Games are being played. If this is some sort of joke, it won't come out funny. I should think not. But your time won't be wasted. There is a murder to be reported. Where is Jonathan? He's in a meeting in Dr. Arcroyd's office. You'll come with me, Lieutenant. I think we can put an end to all this. Hey, Russ, you want this too? Yeah. Chief of my department. Oh, hello. How are you? I have reason to believe this man has committed a murder. Dr. Joshua can probably explain it much better than I can. Mr. Fields has been acting very strangely lately. Nervous, erratic. Dr. Joshua and I have discussed it along with Dr. Arkroyd. We've been very worried about Mr. Fields. It became apparent that he was having an affair with Dr. Arkroyd's secretary. And things were turning out badly. There were other things. At any rate, yesterday afternoon, I decided to talk it out with poor Mr. Fields. I went to his apartment. He wasn't there, but the door was open. It's terribly difficult to say this. In the, in the bedroom, the girl was there, dead. It was obvious what had happened. Oh, I spent a terrible night wondering what to do. And this morning, Dr. Arkroyd and I talked it over. We decided to call in the authorities. You did what this morning? Dr. Arkroyd and I talked it over. Dr. Arkroyd uh, committed suicide sometime yesterday afternoon. He's dead, Lou.